Hey Ray, I'm doing fine and uh, I think this must be about our fifth attempt <laughs> to do this, so God willing we'll get it done this time. Yes, Ray, basically um, my mother and myself, we had experienced psychic phenomena since our childhoods and we were both very interested in the supernatural, esoteric, ghost hunting, life after death, psychic phenomena, all that type of thing. So um, we didn't get too much into it until around about when I was about 12 or 13, my parents divorced and then my mother felt more easier you know, to get into it because my dad didn't really approve of us doing anything like that. So really, we both really delved right into it a lot deeper. Um, she began going to what we call here the spiritualist church and I went with her. Um, we were very much into what, what might be labelled as new age type of activities. We were into um, developing as psychics, you know, the other mediums at the spiritualist church would invite us to open circles to... to um, try to contact our dead relatives, our, our spirit guides, and so on. And so we went to Spiritualist Church every week to these, what you could call seances, um, where channeling took place, messages from other entities were given, and we were very much um, aiming to both become mediums, actually. And my mother was certainly more advanced than me because she... Um, had been studying all these things for years through books and so on. And um, we basically just did everything they advised. Now, what the, the two two kind of the main things that they really advised we do um, on a regular basis was actually yoga and meditation. Um, the mediums and channelers and so on explained that although people use yoga and meditation um, in a non-spiritual way or so they think, um, just to relax or, or, or um, as a gentle exercise. In actual fact, when you do yoga and meditation, it really helps to open you up to the spiritual realm and therefore really um, advances you very quickly as a channeler or as a medium. And indeed, we, we so we went to the Buddhist uh, centre in Glasgow, Scotland, and we learned meditation, we learned yoga, and indeed the yogis themselves even taught us that this is actually very spiritual. You are, um, the, the Sanskrit word in yoga um, actually means to, to yoke, actually means to, to yoke yourself with the so-called universal spirit. You're yoking yourself with the so-called universal spirit um, and if you like, um, these uh, Hindu gods, um, spirits, that whether or not you realise it, as I say, you're just doing it for relaxation perhaps, but whether or not you realise it, you are yoking yourself to these spirits. And certainly um, that was something we wanted to do because we were told it would help us advance. So, um, yes, we did do that. Um, we really were interested in, in lots of different philosophies and spiritual ideas like we took from Hinduism Buddhism, we very much believed in reincarnation and karma. We very much believed in, in crystal healing and healing of your chakras and so on. We, we deliberately um, did chakra work and so on. Um, now, we were also taught, a lot of people don't maybe realise this, even many mediums won't realise this, but we were also taught an actual fact that Lucifer is God, if you like. Lucifer is source. Um, that the Bible is wrong, Jesus Christ is not God. Lucifer is the light bearer and he is the one who will bring all of the world together in peace um, and a universal. Um, if you're speaking, Ray, I can't actually hear you. I can see your lips moving. Sorry about this. What you're saying is that Lucifer well, yeah, in a sense it was, you know, that the, the Bible was wrong. Um, Lucifer is God, or, or he is the light bearer. He is the one that will bring us all together. And to do this, 
He uses all sorts of religions and faiths and, and spiritualities. It doesn't matter whether you are uh, born in India under a, a Hindu or a, a Buddhist. It doesn't matter if you're in, born in Africa and perhaps a, a, a native shaman. Um, it, it really doesn't matter what spirituality you're into because it is all, all paths lead to God, all paths lead to Lucifer, and that he's the source of all of these things. And in fact, it is his supernatural power that empowers all of the all of the miracles that you see and all of the supernatural experiences that you see under all of these spiritualities. So they would say that, you know, that we have to meditate, we have to do yoga and all of these things. And indeed, we were encouraged to share this with the public and um, whatever career you went into, you were advised to. So it was an agenda, although we didn't see it as a, an evil agenda, not at all. We were taught Lucifer was a good guy and to help the world. If you really are a caring person, you want to help the world and all the people in the world, encourage as many people as you can to get into yoga, meditation, channeling, Buddhism, Hinduism, any of these things so that we might, if we all have a global um, global meditation days, for example, globally, um, this will raise the, the, the vibrations of, of the world. It will bring enlightenment. It will bring so-called spiritual evolution. And if we all do this in conjunction with, of course, spiritual advice from these ascended masters, spirit guides from the so-called dead and from so-called aliens from other planets, that we will all come together and bring peace and be as one. So oneness is very is a key key word within the new age. Oneness and peace. So of course we believed this, and we didn't think, well, maybe you know they're lying, and Lucifer really did become Satan. How how do we know uh, the, the Bible? Maybe it's true. Well, you know, no, because remember they had evidence to back this up. These guys had spirit guides. They had ascended masters. They had gurus who would back this up whilst they claimed all these beings, all these entities would all basically give uh, the same message. So you're not going to doubt some wonderful guru who materialises in front of you from thin air. You're not going to assume, oh, maybe he's a demon from Satan, because that just sounds too weird. Um, so that's why, of course, we believed it and went along with it. So, you know, again, we were taught by um, people who knew a lot about, for example, and again, people might say, well, yeah, but New Agers today don't really believe that or as long as you use the powers for good, it doesn't really matter the source of it. I would argue, no, um, the source has always been uh, from Lucifer, a.k.a. Satan, and still is because the top New Agers um, and the current top New Agers do still believe Lucifer is God, and I can give you evidence for that, and they're still claiming that the powers come from him and all of that. So, you know, you have obviously Madame Blavatsky from the, the 1800s, who was a self-confessed Luciferian medium. She founded the, the, the Lucis uh, magazine. She founded the, the religion called Theosophy, and she was termed the mother of New Age. So as the mother of the New Age movement. She had great influence and still does across the whole New Age movement. And she wrote a magazine uh, called Lucifer. She wrote books where she said Lucifer is God. Um, she even, if I may, went a bit further than that, if I may read a quote. Uh, Helena Madame Blavatsky. She said, oh, here we are. Um, Satan, the enemy of God, is in reality the highest divine spirit. That's in the Secret Doctrine, Volume 2, page 337. Okay, out of Madame Blavatsky's mouth. You then have, of course, Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, and who wrote the Satanic Bible. He wrote on a variety of New Age things in his uh, book. He wrote about what we would all class as New Age um practices and activities and however listen to this he said satanists should reclaim new age practices and use them in rituals dedicated to the devil where they rightfully belong 
So he accused New Agers of stealing New Age practices that actually belonged to Satan. There you go, he admitted that. Um, Alistair Crowley, as you know, called himself the beast, the most evil man on earth. He admitted being into satanic, you know, he even spoke about sacrificing male children in his books. That's, you know, you can read that, it's, it's out there in Confessions of Alistair Crowley. Now, he said he wanted to become Satan's chief of staff. And he also said he was into all of the so-called New Age stuff, meditation, yoga and all of that. Now, he even said he deliberately practiced yoga because he knew he would invite demons into himself. He knew that as, a, as someone who practiced the occult all his life. He knew what he was doing. Um, and then, of course, in the 60s, this was all New Age and the hippie movement and all that spread the New Age worldwide even more so. Um, and even then, we began to see more of it coming into the church. Today, you have um, Marina Ambromovich, you know, a so-called artist. Um, and if anyone saw her, her stuff about spirit cooking, they'll realise it, it looks satanic, even if it isn't. Well, <laughs> she um, says she does all the New Age activities. She does all of that stuff because she believes in, in healing herself and you and helping her karma and all that. So is it not interesting that all these pretty evil looking people um, advocate all the New Age um, activities? So I just thought I would get that in there right at the start before I, for, before I forget. You know, so these these guys know what they're doing. They know that they are, they're getting power and, and the, the hardcore Satanist and occultists, they know that these things are all under Lucifer. Um, and has it crept into the church? Well, in actual fact, it, it's crept into everywhere. As I say, back in the 60s, the whole world um, view of society changed drastically everywhere. Um, you know, in, in society, we, we, we're now called a post-truth society. So truth is just, oh, well, if it works for you, do it, and uh, blah, blah, it doesn't really matter. There's no absolute yeah. truth. So it doesn't matter if you follow Jesus or, or Buddha or Satan or whoever. Well, it works for you. That's, that's your way to God. Well, you know, I'd like to, to read people who say, well, there's no way that, you know, the New Age terminology is crept into the Bible, surely. Um if you want, you can check this out. For example, where are we now? I had it written down. Ephesians 4, 6. If you look at Ephesians 4, 6, the, the message version says this. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. Oneness with a capital O. Now, New Agers know that when you use the, the, the word oneness with a capital O, you're actually talking very much so about this New Age universal um, idea under Lucifer. The New Century version very similarly says, God rules everything and is everywhere and is in everything. Well, that's not true. That's a New Age idea, but it's not true. Um, God's Holy Spirit... Yeah, well, well, definitely, because, as I said earlier, uh, oneness is very much, it's the Luciferian doctrine, it's the doctrine of those who believe Lucifer is God. Oneness, all religions, all spiritualities, all supernatural phenomena comes from S Lucifer. He is the one, and all of us together can come together in peace, no matter our religion, and help the world uh, have peace when we all meditate, when we all get into yoga, when we all drop our Christian ideas and become more spiritual and less religious, they say, um, Lucifer, uh, he, he, he is a real, anti, he is a real uh, Messiah figure, they believe, and he will come back to earth and bring peace to all religions. And of course, we know the Bible says that is what happens, but it's the Antichrist who does it. Well, exactly, you know, people might say, what's wrong about it? Well, Remember, this is not the truth. You know, Lucifer is not God. Um, going back to my testimony, when my mother and I were a spiritualist and, and into all the New Age things, you know, we also had, for example, relatives who were mediums who were also in Freemasonry. We had one uncle who, who led 
a spiritualist church in Ayrshire, and he was also very high up in the Freemasons. And of course, within that, he he believed uh, Lucifer um, was God, as the Freemasons do when they reach the, the higher levels of it. So much of it, and, and Madame Blavatsky, she taught this under theosophy. Now, under theosophy, she made great advances in the 1800s of getting together top people around the world, whether they were Hindus, Buddhists, shamans, witches, Satanists, whatever she got, the kind of top leaders of these groups around the world, gathered them together, came together, and, and they um, obviously must have wrote letters, they didn't have emails then, but they all, um, yes, agreed Lucifer is God, and they all came under this umbrella of theosophy, So, and that still stands today, of course. So, yes, it's creeping in the church in the sense of yoga, meditation is creeping in the church, mindfulness. Um, mindfulness is new age. It's kind of like a modern version of, if you like, um, just centering your, your thoughts on the moment, similar to meditation, centering yourself um, to, to bring about peace in your life. Again, sounds wonderful, but again, you are actually tuning in to spirits, whether you realise it or not. Um, you have acupressure now. There's plenty of Christians doing things like acu acupressure, Reiki, and so on. And again, if, if you are, uh, for example, um, a, a proper Reiki master um, with a history of deep knowledge of Reiki, you will know that these so-called Reiki spirit guides are involved in channeling that Reiki to the client. Again, it's supernatural. It, it's spiritual. Absolutely, Ray. And, you know, similar to energy healing, which we're hearing a lot about now, it seems uh, YouTube um, has adverts for energy healing all the time um, and angel workshops and so on. You know, again, if any, any energy is, someone is claiming that they can use certain energies to heal you, if it's not coming from Jesus Christ, it's coming from the other source. It's really black and white, and I know some people might go, oh, it can't be, but it is black or white. It's either coming from Jesus Christ or it's coming from Satan, a.k.a. Lucifer, spirit guides, and so on. Well, basically, you know, um, all through the Old Testament and the New Testament, believers were always um, getting into the activities of their neighbours, whether it was witchcraft or paganism, um, today we, we may call it New Age, uh, and all through the, the Bible, including the New Testament, there were warnings to believers not to do these things. Um, so some people, again, might say you and I are trying to just, we're just fear mongers today, or, or we're being too serious or something like that. But you know, that look at the New Testament, the Apostle Paul was constantly warning the churches about um, getting into things that, that were empowered by demons uh, and that's exactly what he said so um we're not being <laughs> fear mongering here at all but but yeah you know for example an angel board if you if you even see the angel boards that have sought adverts for them they look pretty much like a Ouija board except they have a picture of an angel on it you know so uh, angel cards are if you like tarot cards that have just got a, a Christian uh, look about them, but they're basically the same thing. Why? Because God um, doesn't speak to us through divination. And you know, if you if you think about if you go for an angel reading or, or these angel cards, even if it's got, uh, even if I had a picture of John the Baptist on it, it does not mean it's John the Baptist or, or someone like that talking to you. Because in your daily life, um, I, I, if if you've been a Christian for twenty years. Do you, do you find that when you pray, uh, you get an immediate answer from God every single day? No. Um, even if, if, even if you have met someone who is a, a prophet of, of the Lord and perhaps gives you a prophecy, you know, you can't just pick out an angel card and get, and, and expect, oh, well, these messages are all coming from God. God doesn't work that way. Um, and I myself actually, much to my embarrassment and shame, did uh, get deceived by so-called angel workshops um, in recent years because it was in um, 
Christian ministries in, in Scotland who um, I believed um, I respected and, and um, were leaders. And they started doing this where you could speak to angels. Now, at first I was like, oh, no, this is new age. Can't go near that. Definitely new age. From what I knew uh, and from what I saw in the Bible, I thought that can't be so. But it's interesting, isn't it, how deception works. And so many of the leaders in Scotland um, felt it was of God. And, of course, before long, I ended up going uh, to these so-called angel workshops. I didn't go for that long because basically I soon realised it. Well, it really was demonic. Obviously, I was praying about it. Um, and one of the so-called workshops I went to, the leader, a, a, a lovely lady, by the way, I, I really love her to bits, um, really lovely lady. She loves the Lord. Um, but she said um, to us, recommended to us that you do this practice every day, every day you, now that you have asked your angel to to speak to you um, every day sit down and ask your angel direction for the day now when I heard that I thought oh oh there is no way that, that we do not see this in the Bible and what you're doing there is replacing the Holy Spirit really um, for an angel um, I also prayed and asked the Lord to reveal to me uh, um, the truth and he very graciously and mercifully showed me a demon um, and it was in the form of the jester, which is actually a, car a tarot card figure, but it was in the form of the jester. And I realised it had been making a fool of me, clearly. Now, as soon as I knew that, Ray, I, although I, you know, can um, minister deliverance to people myself, and I maybe could have done self-deliverance, however, I wanted the accountability. I wanted to, to offload this to someone and share. And I went to a deliverance minister and him and his wife, Yes, I had picked up a demon from doing this, and yes, they cast it out of me, and no more was I getting so-called so communication from this angel that was meant to be an angel of God. Well, you know, it's interesting because a lot of New Agers are very much into talking to angels too, so a New Ager listening to this may just think, well, it really was an angel, or it really was John the Baptist, or... Uh, Ezekiel or, or someone talking to you after all they were you know believers and you're a Christian why not but it's not biblical um, yes we see through the Bible instances where angels did appear I'm not discounting that whatsoever but it tended to be for very very significant important really important reasons often to do with Christ himself like announcing his birth or whatever they certainly most certainly did not appear to the uh, Old Testament folks or, or, or the apostles on a daily basis to, to talk to them and give them advice. It, it's just not um, consistent uh, with the Bible. Um, and, and we also have folks today, Christians um, I'm talking about here, um, who believe that not only that, but we can now um, talk to the great cloud of witnesses. The great cloud of witnesses. Yeah, in the book in the book of Hebrews, so and they're not even seeing this as a form of divination, as a as a, as a or as a form of deception. They believe they they can receive um, information from them. Like I said earlier, it, it could be even John the Baptist. It could be any biblical person who uh, you are now able to talk to now. I saw this on websites um, of well-known Pentecostal ministries. Now, um, again, folks might say, well, Laura, but, you know, maybe you're just wrong. You've got a background in that kind of stuff. You want to stay clear of it. You want to know, you know, if you look at the Bible, it is not consistent that we do these things. And why, anyway, would you want to listen to what, for example, um, a great preacher of last century has to tell you or what um, Elijah has to tell you. It, the, the Bible has got what we need to know. The Holy Spirit can show you things. You do not need to. All that does is it causes, a, a, I believe, a fascination and a, a, an excitement and a dependence as well on these entities. Well, Ray, I would uh, say that myself. However, as I just said a minute ago, I myself was deceived. 
by so-called angel workshops. You know, me with the knowledge I have of this kind of stuff, of my experience in the occult, and yet I was deceived by it. Why does that happen? Deception happens, you know, you trust your leaders, um, especially if they are uh, very godly people. They are really close to Jesus, um, and, and you know that. They love the Lord, and they love people, um, and they have great faith and, and everything like that. You just trust you trust your leaders, um, perhaps too easily, as I certainly did. And if you do get that check in your spirit about it, you'll doubt yourself and say, no, that I must just be overreacting. Uh, all the Christians are doing it now. It must be okay. And, you know, there are those who will even say it's the latter days. Therefore, we are getting new revelation from the Holy Spirit. New. Um, so, of course, you're going to think, oh, well, yeah, this is new revelation. doesn't look too consistent with the Bible, but I'm just not very clever. My leaders are really clever, so I, I have to trust them. And it, 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 yeah. Um, and especially if you don't have, say, the kind of knowledge I've got on yoga and meditation and all that, then they, they really would fall for it. Um, and I'm not being judgmental in saying this, of course, to, to anyone that those involved or or people who are pushing these things. But you know, the Apostle Paul was constantly warning through the Bible, uh, the New Testament, about such things. And um, there are Christians today who even say you shouldn't be teaching this, you shouldn't be saying these things are dangerous. After all, uh, Christians can't really come to any harm because we're all under the blood of Jesus now. And even if they do do something demonic, it's okay, we're under the blood of Jesus. Well, and then we would say that's perhaps a hyper-grace message that is actually incorrect. The, the Apostle Paul didn't say that, did he? He didn't say it's okay if you kind of dabble in a bit of witchcraft, you're under the blood of Jesus, it'll be okay. No, um, we've not to fellowship with uh, the fruits of darkness, they're not to fellowship, sit at the Lord's table and sit um, at the table of demons. Like myself, I literally needed deliverance, I literally needed a demon cast out of me from being involved in so-called angel workshop. You know, so it doesn't matter um, what you get into. If you if it's not of God, you will need deliverance. Um, you know, my mother and I, we were very much into all of it. And basically everything seemed fantastic until we began to get attacked by these so-called spirit guides, ascended masters. We began to get attacked by even our so-called dead relatives. You know, and our medium friends were lovely people and they tried to help us. Of course they did. Um, and they would give various reasons like, well, sometimes a mischievous spirit can come through and pretend to be your dead relative uh, or pretend to be your spirit, spirit guide, but it isn't actually so. Now, that begs the question, well, maybe they're all mischievous, evil spirits pretending to be your dead relative, pretending to be your spirit guide, but they didn't seem to quite take it that far uh, in their rationale. But that's exactly what my mother and I found out. She would be attacked to the point, the point of exhaustion. She could not sleep at night. She was being raped by demons, which is a very real phenomena. Um, and she went to the doctor and, and asked for sleeping pills because she couldn't sleep at night. The doctor asked what was wrong. My mother explained, well, you know, I'm hearing voices, dead people and, and are coming through to me and attacking me. Um, her kitchen even went up in flames one day because the spirit guides took her into yoga, uh, into your meditation against her will. She went into trance against her will. She did not know what was doing and the kitchen went up in flames. Now, is that really something your spirit guide would do to you? The doctor said, there's no such thing as, you know, dead people's spirit guides you must be schizophrenic, you're clearly in danger, therefore I must incarcerate you in the psychiatric hospital. That's exactly what happened to my mother 20 plus years ago. Great uh, shock to all of us and all of the family. But of course, in the past 20 years, I've heard, heard of this time and time again. It happens all the time to people, not just people in New Age and other religions, people who are dabbling in, in any kind of spirit contact. Christians, too, have ended up in psychiatric hospitals because their pastor has not believed they could even have a demon in their house attacking them, um, 
because they're not in deliverance ministry, they're not believing that they need to cast demons out, the Christian. I suppose um, really sharing testimonies um, like my own or, or people who have been involved in these things but came out of it, you know, ex-Satanists, ex-Luciferians, ex-mediums, who actually know that the, the teaching behind all of this and the roots behind it all. For example, everything I was taught as a, a New Ager under the, the, the umbrella of theosophy about Lucifer being God, people in the Illuminati are taught the exact same. Um, I did a few interviews with a woman who was an ex-Illuminati member, and she was taught the same about Lucifer. She was taught to do yoga, meditate, and all of this. Um, and also the, the plan, um, if you like, the plan, which is the same plan as the Illuminati, the, the, the New Age plan that we were taught, um, was to bring everyone together in oneness. Everyone in the world, no matter the religion, bring them together in oneness, have peace. Never mind this fundamental Christianity, no, all come together uh, under the one, uh, which is Lucifer. Um, again, you know, folks, as you say, they, they, they might not believe this if they've never heard it before, but check out people. And as I said earlier, I gave quotes from famous Satanists and occult leaders who admit it, that, that all this new age stuff is under the realm of Satan. So, and when you read the Bible, you know, really read it like it's talking to you today. You know, um, 1 Timothy 4, 1 says, the Spirit expressly says in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. That's just one scripture we could give a ton of scriptures. It is the last days. Syncretism is happening in churches. Pastors are um, allowing certain things that pastors 100 years of a hundred years ago would have actually known more about. Um, so, yeah, be aware. Check out websites by great teachers on, on this type of thing, like, for example, Mike Shreve Ministries. He was a Kundalini Yoga tutor. He knows all about what that really is about. Uh, Warren B. Smith, he was another great um, New Age yoga uh, guru. Carol Matriciana, she's now went to be with the Lord. Carol Matriciana, Yoga Uncoiled. And, you know, you'll see a similar theme. For example, when I came to the Lord, I had a ton of deliverance and demons cast out of me. Yoga demons, by the way. Um, I was surprised that I had yoga demons because I didn't do yoga very long. I got bored with it. However, so I just thought, I probably don't have a yoga demon. I did. And it literally, when Christians cast the yoga demons out of me, I literally wriggled like a snake, much to my, I was rather appalled at that and rather shocked. But yeah, you know, these things are demonic. The Bible's quite clear. Ephesians 5.11, um, take no part in the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. So it's not a case of, oh, don't talk about these things, don't talk about the darkness, don't frighten people. No, we have to expose them like the apostles did. We have to warn the churches um, and, and each other. And um, just be very careful, it's the last days, um, really. You have to know the Bible and not fall for things. I did it, I, I fell for the angel workshop thing. So trust that when you get that um, prompt from the Lord where he's showing you, mm, you know, listen to that and go with that. Go with your um, reaction from the Lord and don't just assume, okay, I don't know very much, these people are my leaders, I trust them, blah, blah, no. Go with what the Holy Spirit is showing you. Go with what the Bible is showing you. And, you know, also what I would like to say is how dangerous spirit, spirit communication is and the fact that they really are demons because my mother, after she came out of the psychiatric hospital, she went home. During that time, I became a Christian. By the way, I met a Christian at university and um, she told me all about Jesus. Normally, I, I didn't believe in him at all. But at this point in my life, I was so desperate. I tried everything to be free of, of, of spirits. And one day I just suddenly realized, you know, I'm so open-minded as a new ager, so open-minded. Uh, we will listen to any spiritual teacher. Why not consider Jesus Christ maybe as God? Why not? And it was as if that thought just opened me to, to, to realizing, 
that why not consider Jesus Christ? And of course, I then discovered there's actually a whole lot of historical evidence and a whole lot of scholars at university who prove Jesus Christ really did live and die on the cross and rise again. This is in historical records. That is like, wow, that, you know, there is no doubt he actually did. He is the son of God. Um, I, I came to Jesus. I, I told my mother. She came to Jesus too. She was let out of the psychiatric hospital. She went home. But the, the Christian church we joined was a new church. The pastor was, was quite young in his faith. He didn't believe a Christian could have demons. So when my mother was still being tormented at home, he said, you really are just mentally ill. He also said I was mentally ill, told my husband to put me in the psychiatric hospital too, which I was terrified about. The demons kept attacking my dear mother and tragically she killed herself. Now, why is that? I would say that's because of the lack of deliverance ministry. My husband did not put me in the psychiatric hospital. We went round and looked and looked and looked until we found a Christian church who did have the deliverance ministry, who cast those demons out of me. And in the last 20 plus years, so many people have contacted me because they saw me on TV, radio, whatever, and they've said to me, that happened to me, Laura. Um, you know, I, I've been in the psychiatric hospital or I'm supposed to be going and I recommend they get a deliverance minister, get set free. And these so-called ghosts, these so-called dead relatives are not your dead relatives. The Bible clearly shows that when someone dies, there is heaven, there is hell, there is no coming back. That's what the Bible shows. And it also says that uh, demons masquerade as if angels of light. You know, people all the time tell me even uh, demons masquerade as if it's your loving relative, not not even your dead relative, but your loving relative. It's your husband sitting there talking to you in spirit form, and yet he's actually in the room next door. You know, they can masquerade as anything. Um, so that itself, as we know, the Old Testament warns about spiritualism, it warns about witchcraft, it warns about talking to these so-called familiar spirits, spirits, which is Hebrew for demon. So, and so many Christians are now getting involved in going to ghost hunts or going to see a medium or a psychic. Um, you know, it's bringing demons into your life and it's demonic and, and people need set free from it. Basically, read you got to read the Bible and not listen to folks who say, but it's nice and it's kind and you can get healed by it and you can get, yes, as you said earlier, every Satan can heal, he can perform miracles, he can perform him and his demons are masters of disguise and the miraculous and of course he can heal. Um, but you don't want healing from those sources. If you need healing, please turn to Jesus Christ. Yeah, and before I do, I'd just like to say, you know, this is creeping not just worldwide and not just into the church, but the devil is after children. And we now have the Disney Channel on YouTube um, with one of their recent programs was about how to become psychic. And they had a psychic on there talking to young children. So when we see that, we know we're in the last days and we know that society, it's a moral and spiritual decline of society when things like that are beginning to happen. And yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when I first read Harry Potter and, and saw the movie, I was utterly shocked because coming from a New Age uh, background involved in paganism, New Age witchcraft stuff, I saw that all the way through it, all the way through it, and I was appalled because I thought this woman knows what she's talking about. She knows what she's doing. Now, you know, why is it that, for example, many witches, many psychics and so on congratulated her on her books? They were very open in saying they were glad she was doing this. Spiritualists, too, they were glad she was doing this because she was bringing it all um, more into society and basically showing people uh, how to do these things. And you, you do have... Yeah, I guess so. And um, she may even be someone who has never touched the occult herself and, and she just uh, says she's doing it um, you know, for fiction, but I would be I would be dubious of, I would doubt that. She certainly even if she has never practiced it herself, 
she's certainly got the real information and puts it in her books, even if she's getting the real information and thinking she's only writing fiction. Okay, but, you know, wizards, witches and so on will literally now go to Harry Potter events, particularly at Halloween, obviously, and teach children uh, wizard spells. Now, we're talking proper occultists, proper wizards and so on are doing this with children, and their parents think, oh, it's just a bit of fun. So, you know, since when in history have we saw that type of thing happening? Not for quite a while. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's definitely just in your face now, and, and if you say anything, then people just assume you're being overreactive. It's simply because they don't know they don't know the source of these things, and they don't know, as I said earlier, that it is all coming from Satan. Um, so, yeah, you know, and if people watching this realise they need help, contact myself, contact Ray, because Ray is a deliverance minister too, and he has a, a, actually a wonderful deliverance manual, which um, he released recently that I did a review of it on my YouTube channel. Um, you can go to my website, which is our spiritualquest.com. Um, I love to collect all types of testimonies and teachings on all of these things by other authors that I feature on my blog there. And you can also see uh, my TV interviews that have been around the world. You can see my my radio show, which lasted for three years, has, has finished. But you can find out all of my those episodes on my YouTube channel under um, The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell. My new radio show will start perhaps the end of the year. And this time... I felt God prompted me to ask a lady to be my co-host, and she is an ex-paranormal investigator, ex-ghost hunter who was very successful all across Florida. So she has a wealth of, of information uh, to share as well. Um, and, and basically, yeah, TV interviews, radio interviews, all of that you can find on my blog. And I do look forward to coming to America perhaps next year, which will be a first time for me in ministry to come there, and um, that's still to be confirmed. Um, uh, no, because it's still to be confirmed, but I'm just really excited about it, because people for years have been asking me to come, and I just haven't felt it was the Lord's timing yet, uh, for whatever reason, but now it's all falling into place, it seems, so really looking forward to that. 